Art is the expression of the soul. On this episode, we're going to be talking with a disabled artist who says on every piece of art he creates, he gives a piece of his soul away. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join our community, you can do that on my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. If you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with the disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today we're going to be chatting with Kauai artist Moses Hamilton, who says when he creates art, it is like freeing his mind and his soul. Moses, thank you so much for joining Chair Chats. I'm really excited about interviewing you today because your art has such a distinct um character about it and uh i just wanted to get to know you a little bit the artist behind the art um and so if you could give an opportunity to our audience to get to know you can you just share a little bit about who you are and real briefly your life journey that has brought you to this point as an artist sure thing honored to do it Pauline. So uh, my name is Moses, Mo Hamilton. A lot of people call me Mo. That's my nickname I had from my uh, early years. And uh, I was born here in the islands, born on the island of Kauai, and then raised between here and the big island. But I've been in Hawaii basically all my life. Uh, I lived a very outdoorsy life. I was a surfer and water man. My middle name, Kai, is, you know, in Hawaiian ocean waters. And I always had a big love of the ocean. Spent a lot of time surfing, fishing, and, you know, spending a lot of ocean time. Uh, very active outdoorsy person and then in 2002 driving home on a wet night uh, I October 18 2002 I went off the road and I hit a tree and broke my neck it was a pretty bad injury I woke up in Queens Hospital on Oahu in a brace with my head in a halo and you know on a ventilator unable to breathe in pretty shocked state of mind uh, Struggled being on a ventilator there on Oahu for quite a while. I was at Queens and then Kaiser's, and uh, one of the things that was uh, would help me get out of the hospital, released from the hospital, was getting off the ventilator. And they were pretty not feeling real good about the chances of me ever breathing on my own again, which was a real fallback, really scary for my parents. And my mom and dad started contacting specialists around the country talking about how it would be possible to get me off a ventilator. And through Craig's Hospital in Denver, which is a spinal cord specialist hospital, we were able to uh, get them in touch with my respiratory therapist and try some more cutting edge techniques that they weren't trying here yet in Hawaii. And after a few months, I was finally able to get off the ventilator, which is able to release me from the main central hospital. And that allowed me to go to a rehab hospital, uh, the Rehab of the Pacific over in Oahu, so I went over to there to start my rehabilitation process. And uh, so there, there was, you know, all kinds of physical rehab, but also there was other kinds of rehab. And one of the programs was the Louis Vuitton art program as an occupational therapy program. I always loved art. So I would go there and I would watch all the artists who would come in and paint. And some were patients of the hospital there at the rehab and some were former patients who would just come to attend the art program. And there were all sorts of disabilities there, everyone from people with leg injuries to brain injuries, you know, so it was quite a, quite a collective of different kinds of disabilities, people coming through some bad stuff. And there were two gentlemen there who would come and paint and they would paint with their mouth and I would watch them a lot. And the teacher eventually came up to one day and introduced himself and uh, it's like, hey, do you like art? And I'm like, yeah, I always actually did draw a little as a youth, didn't paint much, but I always liked to draw. And he's like, well, would you like to try to paint with your mouth? And I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And so I tried to, to do a painting there the first time with my mouth at the program. It was such a struggle. It took me days to even get the most basic scribbles on a page. Uh, and it was really kind of pretty frustrating. 
I felt kind of defeated by the experience. And I was like, well, thanks. I told the teacher, but uh, that was kind of just a letdown. It really made me remember, just kind of remind me of what everything I've lost. And I kind of was a downer at that moment. I was like, well, I'd like to watch everyone else paint, but I don't want to try painting here again. I, no thanks, but no thanks. So then after uh, being at the rehab for a month or so, eventually when I was about to leave the rehab a day or so before I left, the art teacher came to me and he's like, hey, I know that at first experience wasn't very successful, but you never know. Here, take some of these brushes and the mouse stick you put them on and you never know, maybe you'll try again someday. And he was right, about a year and a half, a year after I got home, I was starting to move forward with my new life and adapting to my new situation. And I was starting to like, I need to do something with my days. I had a lot of time just sitting around watching TV and stuff. And I was like, I gotta do more. And uh, I saw the brushes and I'm like, okay, let's try to paint again. And I started with just watercolor, really simple. But that second painting, the first one after being home, it was real simple, but it was a lot better than the first experience at the rehab. And I was able to draw a kind of crude face, but it had eyes and everything was kind of in the right spot. So it was, it was pretty good. I actually have the original by my bed here and I look at it every day. So the first experience, you know, was, was not great. The second was a little better. And it was kind of like a snowball. Third was better than that. And so the more I did it, the better I got. The better that I got, the more I wanted to do it. So it started, you know, following that loop, that momentum started building. And uh, within three years, I was getting pretty good and feeling so comfortable enough that some friends had seen my art. And one of the local guys who uh, owns a shopping center in the area is like, hey, you ever want to come set up and share your art with others? You can come paint at the Honolulu Ching Young Shopping Center. So I would start, I started uh, going down there and my mom and dad bring me down we set up with my art and I would paint down there and people would watch me and stuff like that. Eventually people were like, well, is this sold? And I'm like, well, I don't sell it, but my mom could. She's got the money, she, you know, she had the means, so she made a, started an art business out of it and that's called the Mozart art business after my nickname, Mo. Mozart, Mozart. It's like you were Mozart. meant to do this. <laughs> Mo works with everything. I got all. I got tons of nicknames. I joke because I call me slow mo because my paintings take me forever. <laughs> I love it. So I want to unpack your experience a little bit. Um, sure. I want to understand a little about going back to that first time that you tried to draw your first scribble and it reminded you of what you lost. Yeah, it was a moment. It really did. It was. You know, it was, it was that, it, everything in my mind at that moment was looking backwards. You know, I wasn't at the point of looking forwards yet. But eventually my art was really what led me forward after I was starting to improve on it. I was like, well, you always loved art and you lost a lot, but it really is one door shut, another one opened. All of a sudden, all this time to pursue something that I didn't before because I was busy doing other things. So it became able to so focus in on it. It was like targeting in on what I was meant to do after my experience. And it must have been hard to know that drawing or art, artistry or creativity came so easily prior to your accident. But then after your accident, um, about a year in, after your rehab, you said, let's try again. What was the motivation to try again? You know, I was always kind of a positive goer for a person. And I was starting to feel like, you know, I was getting over the past. You know, I always say it's not what happens, it's what we do after what happens in life. You know, it's how we face the tragedies in front of us. And I was to that point that I was ready to do overcome. And I was through art. I saw that as a way to overcome my hardships. You know, painting, it was starting to be, once I was improving at it, it was starting to be a really meditative experience. I'd be very absorbed in that creative moment where it take my mind away from the stress too. So I just saw it is what was meant to be and started, you know, I mean, it's, disability is never easy. Every day has the grind of all oh, this happened, but then there's other moments and you move forward and you've got, it's beautiful out. And, you know, I see a lot of, a lot of great things going on in my life too. So it's definitely, I definitely moving forward. It's like when uh, something happens, there is the silver linings and then there's the hardships that will always be there, but how we perceive those hardships um, they don't have to outweigh the silver linings. I'm thinking about the person that's watching this right now and life interrupted them, whether it be a disability with an accident or the loss of a child or a spouse or 
you know, um, the loss of a job or this pandemic that in this time of recording we're going through where we're quarantined, life interrupts us all the time. And I guess I just want whoever's watching this right now that might feel defeated like you did at one time, how did you overcome that to get to the other side? Yeah, well, you know, I have even like one of the little things I always tell myself, you know, there's dips in the road. Let's just hope there's some rainbows on the upside. You know, when you're coming back, you're going down, and then also you're coming up, and there's this beautiful rainbow. Life is full of those movements of the ups and downs, and sometimes in big dips, and you really, you really go down, but it will change. There's always, you know, you got to keep forward movements to find better things in life. Like I was saying earlier, it's not what happens in life. It's how we become the instrument to overcome what happens. You know, we can change and adapt and be strong and dig deep to really find our stronger self to overcome the hardships of life. I mean, that's one of the great things about humans is our resilience to overcome the hardest of things in life. You know, we can suffer terrible hardships, but then there's our strength of will to move forward and kind of become the new person. You know, every, every moment you can change and become a new person. You know, every moment is a new moment. You have every moment to step forward and be stronger and overcome your hardships. I mean, it's, it's a testament to, the, to your will. You got to dig deal down deep and really move forward with your strongest being. And, you know, try to think of the moments ahead. Because there's always, whenever there's a hard moment, there's a wonderful moment somewhere down the road from there, too. So you got to remember in this hard moment, look forward. There's going to be wonderful moments again. And a lot of your art pieces are inspired by Hawaiian culture. And um, you could even look at the Hawaiian culture and say their life was interrupted, right? By white men coming to the islands and interrupting their way of life and introducing a different way of doing life. Um, can you speak a little bit more about the influence uh, influences on your art? Yeah, you know, I love the cultural diversity of Hawaii and being raised among the Hawaiians. They just have the most strong kind of nature way of life. There's, there's one, they're, they got wonderful history. And, you know, the, the ways of nature, I love nature. I love, you know, the, this, that put your fingers in the mud, you know, kind of style. Of, you get down into it and you make the best of what you got, even after the hard times. And they have been through so much, but there's there's so much aloha in so many of the Hawaiians, and their strength, their 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 will to be strong and be who they are, and love their culture, and you know adapting to our world is still not always easy. I know for some of them, and, but they have, and they they they're, they're some wonderful people. Your art pieces are very intricate, and they have these beautiful colors and they take in nature and they take in the Hawaiian culture. If someone were want, wanting to see more of your pieces and even purchase them and adorn their homes with them, where can they go? Uh, the Mozart website, pretty good, easy one. It's Mozart, M-O-S-A-R-T, Kauai, K-A-U-A-I.com. So Mozart, Kauai.com. Uh, you can see all my art there. You can purchase it and stuff there too. And uh, there's links also on that website to my social media. If you want to see my art on the, uh, just like as it goes through different phases, I try to do my work in progress and stuff so people can see where it starts and where it goes and stuff like that too. So they can get a little more of my story there too. And you mentioned when you do art, it's almost a meditative process. And you mentioned to me prior to this interview in a conversation that it's like it frees your mind when you uh, when you paint or when you are creative and you leave a piece of your soul on the canvas. Tell me more about that. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that's one of my, my quotes on one of my uh, social media sites. It's, even though I've been hurt so bad by disability, there are, I've been set free to set free of it. You know, my art really does set me free of my disability. When I'm painting, I'm focused on that moment of creation, of letting my soul kind of be written into the page and you know painted onto the canvas i'm letting a little of my soul right out in that moment it's it's kind of a release of my soul too it sets it free of my bodily experience it's my the mind you know, the body's great but the mind is even so much more important the heart you know but i'm painting it's kind of letting all that that i sometimes feel locked up because my body is or 
but my art sets me free of my body. It sets me free of my limitations. I want to ask you, how would you define freedom then when your body may feel like you're so trapped in it? Freedom is your, in your soul and in your mind. I mean, a free mind is the most important at all. Don't, don't let your physical situation be your jail. You know, you got to free your mind to move past it. Your mind has so much power. The mind can contemplate and think past here and now. It can think to the future. It can, come to, it can contemplate the past. It, we, the, the power of contemplation, to be able to look inside ourselves too, it's what a lot of animals don't have. We have the mind to explore beyond our physical being. We are much a mental creature. We have the ability to travel with our mind. Even though I can't travel physically even, I can travel through books and through, you know, just imagination and through things like television. There's great ways to travel. Our mind is a great vehicle. It's a much better vehicle than even our body in a lot of ways. It can really, I think our thoughts are our freedom. Yeah, I think that's such an important takeaway from this uh, episode is that your freedom is not defined by the circumstances that we find ourselves in. It's how we use our own personal power uh, to go beyond those circumstances and be bigger than those. Yeah, no, I will not let my physical disability be the chains that hold me to what is. I'm going to break free of my chains and I'm going to be free of my disability through my thoughts, through my art, through my creative outlets. You know, my being will not be chained by something so physical. Thank you so much, Moses. I so appreciate your insight and you sharing with us so honestly and courageously and continuing to put your art out there because it's not easy. I know even myself, I'm on the board of an art school locally here on the Big Island and even I am scared of actually being creative because of the fear of what other people will think about it and the judgment that may be passed of like, ah, she's not that great or my me yeah. comparing myself to somebody else. So I want to thank you for having the courage to pick up that brush again and continue working at it because if you hadn't, we wouldn't have so much more beauty in our lives. So I'm going to in, in, uh, encourage the viewer right now to go to the website. And what was that website one more time? MozartKawaii.com. I was going to say too about painting and you know creating art. If it makes you feel good, that's what counts. If you're enjoying yourself, don't let others or even yourself on my hardest touch and I'm like oh that's not really good but if you're having fun if, that, if the experience at the end is you feel good they you know who cares what everyone else thinks and art is you know I always say too for me half the fun of painting is being able to share my soul through art you know half the fun of it is I get to share the experience you know that's half the fun for me is sharing it Thank you so much. And I think there's so much freedom and creativity. So I want to ask you, the viewer, what creative outlets do, do you practice? Um, and if you're scared a little bit about jumping into the creative deep end, why? What are the beliefs holding you back? And how can you break free of those chains? Because the chains don't always have to look like a disability. Often the chains are things that happen in our own mind. So please comment below. I'd love to hear from you and engage with you. Um, I also want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join our community, you can do that on my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. If you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.